Hi everyone, my name is Wade Onger and we are here at Harrop Engineering, performance since 1955 at the home base in Preston, Victoria. And as you can see behind me, a whole myriad of fantastic motor cars and some really unique people who've created these cars and we're going to find out all about their passion and why they drive them, why they've built them and why they continue to develop these products. Today we're going to head off on a leisurely drive to the Yarra Valley, have a bit of lunch, check things out there and then tomorrow we're going to let loose at Winter Motor Raceway and these guys and girls, they're going to tear it up. I can't wait to see how these cars perform in a racetrack situation. It is the Harrop Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. There's 15 very cool cars, some really cool people attached as well. Let's go and see what happens over the next couple of days. So the field stopped by the gorgeous Henrahan Vineyards in the Yarra Valley for a gourmet barbecue. Out on the open highway, the dual lane road as we got closer to Benalla and you could just tell that everyone was starting to get excited. We are going to step things up significantly. Welcome to you. What a great day to kick things off yesterday though. Yeah, thanks Wade. Like this event's all about the diversity of the, the field. Like we've got, you know, cars from the 70s right through to current day and from four cylinder through to V8s and a lot of our customers build these awesome street cars but they just don't get to enjoy them. So this event's about, you know, a nice road rally yesterday and then coming to the track today and multi-discipline testing of the vehicle and the driver. Now there's an interesting demographic really of your drivers because there's guys into their 60s, there's people that are probably in their 20s, there's drifting discipline, there's people that have had limited track experience, there's people that just want to go fast and have nowhere to do it, so yep. you've got a great broad range of personalities. Absolutely, and some of the guys are, you know, they're seasoned veterans of doing motorsport and some are just here to participate and, and really get out there and drive their cars and the weather's awesome, so I think we're going to see some great competitive activity. Now there's three different phases to what we're doing today, explain that. So we start with motor car, which is really testing the agility of the car. Um, the guys will run side by side over on the motor car pad. And then after that, we're gonna to shift to the circuit. And we're gonna run an auto test through the, the tight turns at the top of the circuit. And then also run a mini drag strip on the, on the main straight for 200 meters. And they'll do that concurrently for say three or four times, have a beautiful lunch. And then in the afternoon, we'll hit the track for some circuit laps. There will be scoring and there was judging going on yesterday as well, correct? That's right, and we sort of in the interest of democracy, we got the competitors to actually judge each other. So they had a, I guess, a balanced scorecard to rank the innovation and the upgrades that each car has. Each car had to drive from, from Preston, where Harrop's based, up to Benalla last night. We stopped at the vineyard and the fact that they could get here under their own steam and not break down and not get defected was very important and, and keep to the speed limit. So, Today is all about timed elements. There's no wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. It's really just against the clock. And um, they'll get um, multiple opportunities to test themselves. And the sum of those results will end up with an outright leader. We'll have a, an award for the top cars. So whether it's a Euro car, an Aussie car, a Japanese car, or, or an American car for that matter. It's gonna be a busy day. There's lots of on-track activity with some great personalities and some truly special motor cars. It's gonna be a fantastic day. Let's get into it right now. Couldn't ask for a better morning for it. Everybody amped about the first session of the day, the motor carna, and I think a lot of people are gonna be interested to see how they pit themselves up against the various cars. Peter Fitzgerald, this Porsche, a 14.19 second run, was always gonna be rapid and probably one of the quickest with 650 horsepower. Peter Fitzgerald, the Porsche looked fast, it spooled up, how did it feel? Uh, yeah, I think I WD'd on the first one, I ran around the car instead of through it, so yeah, alright. Dave Shart, the American in the Toyota 86, a 1561. I don't think that's representative of the performance of this car, and I'm not 100% sure that Dave is happy with his run. Dave Sharp from Forge Line in the 86, how was it? Uh, I think I could have done better. <laughs> Still struggle with the left hand shipping, that's fine. Craig Dean, first time this car has fired an angry shot, the Shelby GT, a 14.94. Craig, this Mustang's looking absolutely stunning, the Shelby GT, how was the first run? Uh, yeah, a little bit nervy, obviously, uh, just having a go at something different. This is the first time it's been on the track or done anything in haste anyway, so got to get the feel of it, but yeah, it's pretty good. This is interesting now, the Audi of Christian Fitzgerald, the Audi S3, a 13.79 just a hair outside the Lotus. Christian, very impressed with Mum's shopping car, believe it or not. Christian Fitzgerald, father and son on the same bit of road, how did it feel? Mate, it's good to give him one. 
<laughs> no, this uh, this was fantastic. I was surprised me on that track there. Stephen Bradford, a 13.04, the 9972 Turbo. What an impressive performance from Stephen Bradford. Steve, the turbo looked fast out there. How did it feel? Yeah, handled surprisingly well. First time I've had it on the Motocana. Awesome work, good stuff. So the Motocana results see Stephen Bradford quickest with a 13.04. Christian Fitzgerald sneaks into second. Jeffrey Morton's Lotus is third. So a glorious day at Winter Motor Raceway as we turn our attention to the auto test now. Heath Moore joins me, and this is going to be interesting. A wide variety of cars. Aaron Wheatley in the GTS up first with a 39.93. Big, heavy car, very quick in a straight line. Brendan Finlay in the VE Coupe. 22-inch wheels makes it hard to get through the corners, but again, with Harrop brake, should be able to get that into the box easily. Yeah, and you know he loves to get on the gas. Look at the size of those rims. That is an amazing vehicle. Hard to believe it started off as a Maloo. On board now with Martin Moran. The GTO Coupe was a bit of a surprise in the Motocana, to be honest. And he's got some experience around Winton with the race seat and the harnesses. He knows how to turn corners, and again, I think he's going to get this through to the box pretty easily. 35.91. Ben shoots now. You know a fair bit about this BMW. Indeed, Wade, it's a little bit grip limited with the new suspension that we're running and the tyre's not offering quite enough grip, but Ben's well versed in getting the car sideways and steering it off the throttle. Wasn't overly happy with his Motocana test, so he's hoping to step it up right now. 33.8. This is the car I think everybody expects to be the quickest in this. Jeffrey Morton in the Lotus. Highly modified, 1.8 litre, E85, supercharged by Harrop and Simply Sports Cars, and Jeff's done a lot of driving, so he... He's done Dutton rallies, he knows how to drive around tight, twisty circuits, really what the Lotus is ideally suited to. And you could argue that he's the most prepared out of anyone with this, he brought his own support team. It's almost like Formula One. <laughs> Isn't it just? Very, very intense, this guy, he wants to put a big performance in, and a 30.7, that is quick enough to be the quickest. Jeff Morton in the Lotus Elise. So your top 10 for auto test sees Jeff Morton quickest, but only just Peter Fitzgerald, Stephen Bradford, the Porsche is very quick there, Christian Fitzgerald in the Audi. This is an important uh, explanation we need to put forward here on the drag racing side of things. That's right. The time is both reaction and elapsed time, so it seems a little bit slower than you would normally see at the drag strip. And as you can see, Martin in the GDO Coupe gets the power down 9.685. We know that Terry Henderson is going to be impressive in this. He's been practicing. He loves taking his car out on the quarter mile. Here is Terry right now in the GTS, and his time of an 8.6. He'll be happy with that. I think that's one thing I really love the most about all this is the great variance in the drivers and their cars. And here's a good example. Craig Dean in the Shelby GT. Not only does he drive a Mustang, but he lives it. From latest model V8 muscle to old school cool. Justin Smith is awesome. Hillman has been the topic of much discussion. This is a car he's had a lifelong passion for. Tim Harrop, he is a man who has a lot invested emotionally in this whole concept. A proud member of the Harrop family, an important part of Harrop Engineering's team. But have a look at this, a cracking 7.8. And I think there's probably more time in the car. The reaction time is, I think, what let that time down a little bit. Well, if you thought that was quick, how about Stephen Bradford? He is quick on the reaction time. A 7.651 puts him quickest so far, but the Lotus is up next. Let's go to the start line right now. But I'm hoping to improve it this time. No surprises there. Almost a six-second pass. That's fast. He got the reaction time just right and managed to power through for one of the quickest times we've seen. He is looking outstanding for our Husky overall champion. Jeff Morton is the quickest. Time now for our circuit laps and the little Hillman. What an impressive car, two minutes, 3.8. We love having a chrome bumper in the field. This guy, he told us at the start of the show, Brendan Finlay, he was gonna be three quarters. You know what, this is not a three quarter lap for me. He's honest. That looks like 105% to me, Wade. <laughs> 1 minute 56.4. I love the look on his face here when he gets out of shape. Shakes his head. It's just a beautifully designed uh, piece of road car. Kim Smith. 1 minute 51.3 in the Maloo. She's exceptionally smooth behind the wheel. And her enthusiasm, the way she gets into actually learning how to drive the car, maintain the car, it's really what this event really is all about. She was 12th overall. Terry Henderson is another guy that just typifies. Passion never, ever goes out of style for motoring, does it? He and his lovely wife, they had a fantastic time. A 148.6, he was pretty quick. 
This guy is a very handy driver overall. Krista Jager in the Sylvia. That's right, driver trainer Monday to Friday and professional drifter on the weekends. So he really knows how to get the most out of this car. I don't think the potential is what it could be. He's only had this car a short time too. Purchased it off a friend, one minute 45.6. Now, how about this? Just listen here. Christian Fitzgerald getting himself pumped up. I'm pretty sure his old man Peter doesn't have the same tunes bopping out of his car today. I don't know whether it's Mum's CD, but he's got the <laughs> he's got the tunes tuned up and he's hooking into the track now. He's got Bryce following him in a bloody impressive time. One minute 40 to the business end of the deal right now. Into the top six, Dave Sharp, the American in the 86. Now, he recently drove this car in a time attack. That's right, world time attack two weeks ago in Sydney and found, found it quite difficult sitting on the right side of the car, shifting with the left hand there, but Winton seemed to really suit his driving style and he managed to get a pretty impressive time from the 86. Lovely warm day considering he's heading back to the Ohio snow. One minute 37.9. Ben shoots in the Harrop BMW M3. He came in with a 1 minute 37.4. Was that what you were hoping for? I think there's more potential with the car. It's reasonable. Ben's a very competent driver. I think this chassis tuning and suspension, we can get some more time out of this car. But again, a fresh rebuild after a nasty shunt earlier in the year. Great wheels too. Love those forge lines. Now, these are the last two cars we saw and the top two ranked driver car combinations in the circuit laps. Jeff Morton. He has come fully prepared for this. And as you can see in the eyes, he's very determined. Yeah, he means business. First time to Winton. Simply sports cars have prepared this car. It's got, they quote, 400 horsepower, but I think well over 450, to be honest, when the lap time shows. 1 minute 32.9 and Jeff Morton from Sydney, as you said, first time around Winton and absolutely carving it up. 1 minute 32.9 puts him as the second fastest car in this session and a real contender for champion overall. And it's interesting, even though the lines are somewhat unconventional, he still manages to get such an impressive time. So he, he knows how to push the limits of the car and you can see the way the car moves around. That's reflective of him putting it right up against the limit. Pretty sure that if you run this event next year at this circuit, you'll come down here and do some testing before. He's that kind of guy. Bryce Washington right behind him there in the Harrop Cup car, giving us some great chase cam shots. But when you combine experience and high performance, this is what happens. 1 minute 30.5, fastest man on the racetrack, Peter Fitzgerald, the legendary Porsche peddler. Don't think he wasn't trying. Absolutely, he's really pushing that car. He knows his way around Winton like no other. The car's got lots of grip, lots of horsepower, and I know speaking to Bryce, he really had to push the cup car to stay behind him. He's got a lot of laps around this place, a one minute 30.5. We know he wanted to beat the Audi no matter what. He never wanted to let his son Christian get the better of him, but Fitzy will be absolutely wrapped with an overall win in the circuit laps. One minute 30.5 puts him about two seconds ahead of Jeff Morton, who gives away an enormous amount of experience compared to this man around this circuit. Well, the circuit result sees Peter Fitzgerald take the win from the Lotus Elise of Jeffrey Morton. Stephen Bradford, third fastest. Shoots in the BMW M3 was fourth. Shart, great job. The American into the top five. And time to head now into the presentation phase of the weekend. Craig, awesome effort from Mustang Motorsport. You've got the very first 2015 Shelby GT Mustang in the country. And you've brought it along to, to Husky 2015 and managed to to take home some silverware, how does it feel? Uh, good mate, I uh, had a good day, uh, the track was good, the, just the whole organisation was really good, Harrop did a great job and I uh, look forward to coming back next year if they invite me and uh, see if we can come back with a blistering one next year. Dave, President of Forge Line, it's been a long trip to come and have a bit of fun in the Toyota 86 over the last couple of weeks and it all culminated in taking out the top Japanese award at the, at the Husky event 2015. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels great, just exactly. My trip's coming to an end, been here for a couple of weeks now. What a great way to end the trip. Tim Harrop, our capable operations manager at Harrop, has pedalled the, uh, the Holden VF today. It's been a little bit of a, a mixed bag with uh, a couple of issues, but you managed to take out the top Aussie spot regardless with some consistent times overall. Um, how does it feel and how did the car drive? Yeah, it feels good, Heath. Uh, yeah, a few issues and a transmission issue which uh, stopped us getting out to do those uh, time laps at the end, but the uh, motor carner and the drag, we managed to get a couple of good, reasonable times in, obviously, to get this trophy. So we're going to start off with design and engineering. Everyone we made it democratic, voted for each other's vehicles yesterday at Harrop and throughout the day. 
And uh, the standout winner was Brendan with his stunning VE Coupe with no doubt the amount of work and labour of love that went into modifying what was once a, a VE Malu into what it is today. And I know he had a couple of issues with the clutch, but in the, the spirit of the competition, still sort of pushed on and put on a great show. So let's hear it for Brendan. We had a bit of problem with the clutch overheating, but we made it through the day. It's all in one piece. So I had a really great day and couldn't be happier. Yeah, in the design and engineering side of things, congratulations to Brendan Finlay for scoring the win. But let's look further down the order. Kim Smith was actually second in the Maloo. Great result for her. Aaron Wheatley was third in the GTS. Peter Fitzgerald's Turbo was the fourth position. Ben Schutz in the BMW M3 was fifth. But a special mention to Craig Dean. The Shelby GT was not actually at the event on the first day, and that's when judging was done. You have to wonder whether that car would have been right up there in the design and engineering phase had he been there on the day of judging. Moving into the individual disciplines for the day, the Motocana win went to Stephen Bradford and the auto test and drag racing section, a double win for Jeff Morton in the Lotus. By a small margin over the Harrop M3 was Christian Fitzgerald in the Audi. Oh, great mate, uh, she took me by surprise a little bit, uh, but it shows the consistency throughout the day in each event, uh, really adds up at the end of the day and got us third, so came along at the end. A great day, um, good mix of activities, so the, the Motocana was a little bit rusty to begin with, but um, ended up getting a, a good time there and uh, it was a good combination, I think, of um, you know, breaking down the circuit and also doing the full circuit to finish with. And the car performed well? Yeah, the car was great. It was pretty much um, as I drive it to work, except for pads and the, the rims and the tyres we put on, so um, out of the box, uh, you know, incredibly reliable and great great car, fun to drive. Ready to drop the kids off at school in the morning. Yeah, the toddlers will uh, be back in the car tomorrow morning and they'll be happy it's in one piece. Well, the wife will be. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's terrific. It's nice of my customers to lend me their car occasionally. So uh, thanks to Sally Ann Haynes, who owns the car, letting me bring it up. And uh, thanks to my family for joining us on the weekend and uh, my son for doing such a good job and everyone that turned, turned up. They're a fantastic bunch of people. Well, Jeff, an absolutely awesome effort in your Lotus Simply Sports cars have put together an incredible package. Um, you are new to Winton and new to some of the disciplines that yep. we did, but how does it how does it feel? Yeah, I think the biggest shock was um, winning the drag race, actually. <laughs> um, I've never done a drag in this car before, so um, to beat two uh, 911 turbo Porsches over 200 metres, wow. <laughs> Um, just amazing, yeah. Yeah, the car looks so quick. It's obviously light and it's got a, it's got plenty of power to, to back that up. You were consistent everywhere though, like fast on the track, fast in each of the, you know, Motocana, the auto test and the drag, and that's a fantastic effort and we hope we can see you again next year. And absolutely, count me in already. So Heath, it's historic and it's fitting that the first ever running of the Harrop Ultimate Streetcar Invitational has joint winners. We never would have thought we'd see a turbo and a Lotus in the top spot, but that's exactly what happened. Stephen Bradford's consistency rewards him with third place, well, second overall, really. You move back then to Christian Fitzgerald and the Audi, who certainly proved a point. Ben Schutz and the Beamer, Dave Sharp, the American will go home and be very pleased with that. And considering he missed the first day of uh, the way we did things, Craig Dean, exceptional for his first effort with seventh. Well, that wraps up an unbelievable 2015 Husky. And Heath, you've got to be excited, satisfied, and a bit relieved, I would imagine, that it's over. Absolutely, Wade. It's been an incredible day. The weather was kind. Uh, race solutions and all of the organisation that the Harrop team put into this event. We, we came up with a concept probably six months ago and just wanted to bring together the ultimate street cars, both you know old cars, new cars and everything in between and, and put them on track and put them up against each other. And importantly, the, the personalities that we had at this event is what really made it successful. Absolutely. It's the Harrop ultimate Streetcar Personality Invitational, that's what it is. It's been an amazing event. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage over it over the last couple of days and looking forward to 2016. Roll on.